So before I get into this, I, I just want everyone to know that I know this is referred to as FIP amongst the industry leaders in advanced statistics. But I basically spent about six months um, calling it FIP before I was introduced to the proper way of saying it. So instead of worrying about slipping up and saying FIP all the time, I'm just gonna refer to it as FIP because that's what I'm used to doing. A little arithmetic for you guys today. This, is the two line formula for FIP. So this is a new series we're doing on Matt Wins again. We've done a ton of sports betting 101 tutorials for those of you new to sports betting, but I wanted to get some stuff out there for those of you who've been betting on sports for years or are just interested in more advanced techniques. So I figured why not give a look into the actual system that I've built. Obviously we can't give everything away, but the good news is it would take too long anyways because I've put thousands of hours into a model that was already about halfway done when I took it over. FIP is the number one variable I use to rank pitchers. That really was the formula. I don't know if you could see it well on camera. You can Google FIP formula if you really wanna get nerdy about it. It stands for fielding independent pitching. But what I like to call it is the lucky or unlucky pitcher stat. Basically what it's doing is equalizing the field when it comes to defense and taking out all of the luck variables that go into a pitcher's performance in baseball. There's an obvious advantage as well to betting against a lucky pitcher and on an unlucky pitcher. That sort of goes with our sports betting 101 model of buying low and selling high. So while ERA is the holy statistic that's been used for over 100 years to really grade a pitcher's ability and performance, FIP is a much more accurate statistic to look at and it's weighted the same as ERA because in the formula it uses a constant which is a number used so that you can compare it to another similar statistic. FIP is actually only about 12 years old. It was founded by this German data scientist named Voros McCracken. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly, but what he noticed back in 2007 was that the number of balls that are hit into play against pitchers have almost no correlation season to season. So in my model, I rate players the same way I do complete teams or lineups, which is on a scale of one to 100. And for what it's worth, that goes to two decimal points when we're talking about players, one decimal point when we're talking about teams. So while I concentrate my models on the analytical probability of a specific team outcome, the only other models that I could find that rate players on a scale of one to 100 dealt in fantasy sports, specifically daily fantasy. What I love about FIP is that it's really the first sign that there's a greater symptom going on. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take Zach Davies, the pitcher from the Brewers, as a prime example of that. I actually started thinking about this video yesterday morning before Davies lost his first game. So before then, as of June 15th, he was 7-0, and and he had an ERA in the low twos, which had a pretty large deviation over his career ERA, which is closer to around four. But when I looked at his FIP, his FIP was exactly 4.0. And that's what one would expect from a veteran pitcher that's had an ERA of around four for his entire career. So I compared my ratings against the daily fantasy ratings and found that there is a double digit difference in all three models, all three of which had Davies at least 10 points higher than my model had him. Now I did come across one article on a site that I really respect and it's a publication about sports betting, daily fantasy, and sports analytics in general. However, in this article, the columnist was simply suggesting that he would fade Davies in 
his upcoming games. And while it's a really interesting statistic to look at, I just can't imagine ever basing a wager on one or two data points based on one player, even if it is a pitcher, the most important player on the field. But that's neither here nor there. What this columnist pointed out was that not only was the FIP almost a two point difference from his ERA, but his left on base percentage was one of the worst in baseball. It was a ridiculous 82.9%. So that's what I would call a lucky pitcher. If you are leaving almost 83% of your innings with players on base and you have an ERA under 2.4, you're extremely lucky. And fortunately for us yesterday, in a day that we didn't do so hot, we actually did have the Padres who are playing against the Milwaukee Brewers with Zach Davies pitching. Once again, I would never think of wagering based off of just this one data point. And I also think it'd be ignorant to assume that Las Vegas or the bookmakers aren't taking this into consideration as well. In fact, the line was relatively close for a game between two pitchers, one with a 7-0 record and a 2.2 ERA, the other brand new to the major leagues, pitching in his very first performance. So who do you think 82% of the public was taking in yesterday's Brewers-Padres game? Of course, they were taking the Brewers. I mean, in a game that was almost even, how could you take a new pitcher against one of, if not the best performer so far this season. Well, I think the biggest variable came down to FIP, and that's why I use FIP in place of ERA. I'll say that again. I don't use ERA in any of my models. Instead, I use FIP. So anyways, that's where I'll end today's first advanced tutorial in which we still need a name for. I, I don't know, I'm thinking what's in my model, what's in Matt's model. I don't know, if you have any ideas, feel free to comment below. But remember, while it's always fun to do a little deep digging and reverse engineering to pinpoint large deviations, whether it's in players, teams, coaches, just remember, never assume that the real bookmakers don't also have this variance in mind. For me, it's really just more of a tool to be able to diagnose why a line seems so far off to begin with. And usually after doing some of this forensic analytical searching, you'll figure out that Vegas or the bookmakers, they're on top of it. And lastly, it's also really important to know more about the sports book you're using. Some sports books play it really safe and really do try to limit their liability by getting as close to 50% of the action on both games. Other sports books feel confident enough in their model that they're willing to take a gamble like yesterday where you had 82% of the public on the Brewers. And look what happened. They lost. 82% of the public lost. So I hope you enjoyed this first installment. If you did, please make sure to subscribe. Please make sure to turn on those notifications. As of the taping of this video, we're currently doing what seems like a never ending free picks kickoff for this channel. And we've started off by providing a lot of real value up about 13 units. So if this is the first video you've seen and it's still summer 2019, uh, make sure to check our free picks. They come out daily and I hope you're making money with us. Thanks again for watching. I'm Matthew Alexander from Matt Wins Again. We'll see you guys tomorrow in the winner's circle.